Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, Night Moves. This is the latest film from Kelly Reichard. She's an interesting filmmaker and an original filmmaker with her own kind of vision. You know, you can always tell whether it's Wendy or Lucy or Meek's Cutoff, the kind of slower, quieter, more hypnotic way. And they're not really genre films. They're kind of like original, more auteur-ish kind of written and made films. And then you look at a film like Night Moves, and it's kind of more genre than you'd really expect from her. But I think the interesting thing about it is, as much as it is like a film noir kind of genre with this eco-terrorism slant on it, it still very much feels like one of her movies. It's like if someone combined genre with her style. Part of me is like, that is a cool place for her to go, and maybe it's where she had to go, but I like her previous work where it doesn't go as into that, but I still really appreciate this film and really like this film for having a different slant on her own style. Sometimes there's artists or directors, they do something different and you're like, oh, you shouldn't really be doing that. Maybe just stick to what you're good at. And then there's others where they make works and they change and you're in love with them and you're like, oh, this is such a great idea for a new direction for them artistically. And Night Moves is kind of different where I definitely appreciate it and I like this movie, but I kind of miss the Kelly Reichardt I had seen before while still really liking where she went with this film. And I think that's kind of the odd sense of Night Moves, that it might be maybe the most mainstream film she's made, although it's not really a mainstream film. It still has her slow burn that she's always had throughout her films, maybe not as much as before, but moving that into the genre, Josh and Dina, who both work in Oregon, Josh works on a very environmentally friendly farm and Dina works at a spa and they both really want to do something about the environment so they decide they're going to bomb a dam and they get the help of a Harmon played by Peter Sarsgaard who is a veteran from the US Marines to get lots of fertilizer and bomb the dam to send an ecological message and make people start thinking about the environment through their actions. I was thinking about this actually during the film and I read an interview with Kelly Reichardt and she kind of confirmed it. This film kind of moves like Rafifi. Rafifi is very genre and that's kind of like a film noir, a robbery kind of film. The majority of this film is set around them getting the materials to bomb the dam. But then there's also a section of the film where they have to deal with the consequences of that and what to do with the consequences. And that's when I think film noir really got its darker side. That's when things really could go wrong for everybody. And Night Moves doesn't escape from that. And it does kind of use that noir genre to kind of show how inexperienced these characters are. I've seen this compared to Blue Ruin because these characters aren't really experienced at what they're doing. They're not like professional bomb makers or anything like that, even if the US Marine guy is, they don't really know what they're doing. They almost screw up a lot of times. And it's not really played for laughs. It actually is played for a lot of intensity. There's even times where they can't get a certain amount of fertilizer that gets a little tense. And especially when they're setting up the bomb, that part is incredibly intense. I was kind of surprised how Kelly Reichardt can still have this film move. All her films are, I guess, kind of slow, but I kind of like that about them, the, the kind of art film slowness that goes throughout these films, but it still was really tense. And I think there's kind of the problem with thrillers most of the time is they always have to feel very Hollywood. They always have to be a conventional kind of film nowadays. I don't see very many thrillers that have fun with the genre and do a different twist on it like Night Moves does. And I think that shows how good of a director she is. You're seeing how these people really kind of experience it like boring car rides to get to various things. You see that buying fertilizer isn't that crazy. You see them eating breakfast. It's just really not played for mood. I mean, it is a moody film, but she's not playing sequences for mood. You're kind of at a distance from them. So as an audience, you kind of do get the sense 
of them as people. You know, you might side with them, but you can tell they're a little lost. They don't exactly know what they're doing. You kind of think they do because you've spent all this time with them, but you realize later they, they don't know what they're doing. And it's not an overtly political film and it's not shoving down your throat, you know, that environmental terrorists are gonna come out everywhere. I mean, there's like one line that a lot of people are quoting of Jesse Eisenberg's character saying that all these salmon have to die so people can use their iPods all the time. That's about it. They talk about it a little bit and that they need to do something, but they seem kind of like ordinary people bombing something and kind of ordinary lost people without much of a purpose. I'm not sure if they really understand what they're doing completely. I think they think they understand what they're doing and kind of a naivete that both Dina and Josh have. The performance is from like Jesse Eisenberg who I was wondering right before I saw this film was like you know he's really talky usually. He's usually someone you expect with dialogue. And in this film, he's brooding and silent. Recently, I've been noticing in this and the double, like he has such a range as an actor that I never expected from him. This film probably shows it more than any because this is very much against type because I'd never thought of him as like a brooding actor, but he really can show it. The film really takes his perspective. So he's almost like the film noir character who normally would be giving us like narration. He isn't in this film, but he's like that kind of a character. And you can tell he really understands this world. He really feels like someone who would be working on a farm like this. Dakota Fanning, who she does feel like that wealthier girl who gets involved in this stuff. Dakota Fanning showed an angriness and determination through her performance and kind of an uncertainty to it, but that she could really get this done in certain aspects. She plays it like she's a little crazy and a little unhinged. She does play it kind of like the girl who gets involved in this in the normal kind of genre film, but she plays it more realistically. And Peter Sarsgaard is Harmon. He definitely feels very off and creepy and odd. Almost feels like an older outsider. Like he doesn't really understand what he's doing. Like he is going along with it. Like it's something to do, but he also kind of pretends like he cares about their cause. And I like them together because they really almost feel like they don't know what to talk about because they're so intense about this bombing and they're kind of an odd group together. One of the reasons this gets compared to Blue Ruin because theoretically, I guess, they're kind of very similar in that she's taking on genre in an art film way. And that doesn't really get done as much. You know, you kind of have to pick a side. Blue Ruin does that as well, but in a different way, in a different genre. This using the film noir thing with Kelly Reichardt's usual style is really interesting. Her past two films, after I saw them, I thought they were absolute masterpieces, especially Meek's Cutoff. This I'm not as certain about, and it was mostly due to the fact that it was kind of a departure. I kind of also like that she did that, but not enough that it overpowers the fact that it's kind of different. Maybe that's a problem with me as a viewer, but I still really like how she did it. I got so into it that even I thought background sounds in the theater were part of the film. There was part after the dam explodes and I was actually at the Theater of the Angelica. I thought I heard the waves coming and I realized in that theater you can hear, I'm in New York, you can hear the subway underneath which is, doesn't, isn't the greatest, but I thought that was the wave because I was just so into it and after a while I was like, oh it stopped. I was like, oh that's the subway. It did not occur to me that it could be anything else. In Meek's Cutoff it felt like these people were kind of stuck in a never ending journey and it felt like purgatory and this this film has that sense as well not as much and maybe that's something i miss but i think for a director like this to do a film like this i still think it's a really strong movie how she shows nature and these people live in the woods in oregon and you get a sense of the trees you get a sense of the campground most american directors aren't as interested in nature as she is and through Meeks Cutoff and Wendy and Lucy, you really got a sense of those environments, really get a sense of these characters' environments, but also a sense of nature. She actually likes nature and enjoys nature and wants to show it. And I understood these characters' environment, and it almost made me feel like I got kind of where they were coming from and the kind of characters they were through that setting. And she's just a very masterful director, and I can't really praise her enough. Maybe I'm a little divided on this film for stupid reasons, and I would probably like to see it again, 
because I still really liked it. I liked how it follows a genre, but then it's really slow and a slow burn to it. And I think if I watched films that were almost the same length, I feel like these certain things would happen at the exact same times. But because of the slow movingness to it and the ordinariness to it and the lostness of these characters and the way she does her films, it felt different somehow. That's kind of slower and simpler as it might feel and I think she's really known for her minimalism. There's a lot more in there than you'd really expect and on repeat viewings of those other two films I feel like I've caught up on more of what she's trying to do and what's going on. Both felt that that was in Night Moves and also felt like I understood it maybe too quickly as compared to her other stuff. I'm still kind of leaning more towards, I still think it's a very excellent film, and I like how she went in this direction and chose to do kind of more of a noirish drama with an eco-terrorist twist to it in her kind of style. I think sometimes you have to really appreciate a director doing something different with their style and kind of evolving and or at least trying new things even if it's not what you maybe want as a viewer or as I wanted as a viewer and that doesn't really matter because the film itself is a very good film and it shows her strength as a director and why I still consider her one of the best directors around and this film is evidence of that as much so as her masterpieces even if I don't like it as much it's still a damn good movie so if you've seen Night Moves and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.